Hey everyone, Cranberry Alarm here. Um, just finished up uh, a big portion of our Crayola CAD, still a lot more to go, but I um, figured this would be a good chance to um, take a break and kind of go over um, our superstructure and kind of how our entire architecture is going to be looking on our robot. Coming up on Fun Robotics Network. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the Join button below to get started. I guess we'll start kind of with, uh, go through the operations of the robot. Um, so the first step for our robot is going to be acquiring a game piece. Um, and through all of our ramp testing, we found that it was pretty beneficial to be able to um, have a pretty wide ramp and you also need to have it pretty long for it to be effective. Um, so we kind of tried to maximize that as best we could. Um, so what we went, went ahead and did is uh, we got this ramp in here that's about 22 inches long. Um, we kind of reduced it one uh, help with centering the game piece a little bit more as if you're wider the incline's a little bit too great so um, having it a little bit narrow does help a little bit and also gives us room on the sides to be able to build our superstructure but this kind of box just lays out the area that it will take up and it's going to cover up these um, three faces that I'm currently highlighting now are going to be kind of constructed of polycarbonate um, and we'll kind of build that out as we go and kind of see how that work, uh, looks and make changes as needed if we find out things don't work. Um, and from there it's going to be handed off into our feeder system, our end effector. Um, and you can see we have a little bit of a gap right here that we need to be able to bridge. So um, that'll be an interesting thing to see, to see how the game piece reacts with that gap. Um, we kind of feel like it's coming through with enough velocity, and if we're accepting it on our end effector, we should be able to um, pick it up pretty much no problem. Um, at least we think so. Uh, but we'll go from there um, and make changes as needed. But the we got a set of two-inch rollers right here that'll basically accept the game piece. Um, and from there, the two-inch rollers will then hand it off to our three-inch rollers. Um, and those will be our finishing rollers, the ones that kind of um, eject the game piece. And the reason we went with the three-inch here, we wanted it as big as possible because we found out it was pretty effective to, um, if you have a differential on your um, rollers, um, you can actually get the game piece to twist, which is really helpful with scoring in the L1 position. Um, so we, some people might avoid this design criteria because of that when well, we're going to try and lean into it and make the most out of it. Um, See, so yeah, I guess we'll go and paint over to our field scoring area um, to kind of show kind of how the robot interacts with uh, the uh, coral area and the coral rungs so the robot can be seen like that. Um, we'll go and pan normal to it. Um, so you can see here um, in our normal resting position um, we are in the position to score directly into L1 um, so it will see if we need to raise it up a little bit more to get better um, position but from our testing this was actually a really good spot to be in um, and even being a little bit higher could be more advantageous so we have no problem feeling like if this is our dead spot maybe we set our zero of our elevator just a little bit higher or some sort like that but um, just kind of going up from L2 to L3 to L4 um, this would be our let's go lagging a little bit um, right around here would be about our L2 position uh, and we plan to kind of refine this and tune it as we get the elevator going but we know we'll be able to reach all these locations so we're not too worried about it. This is our L3 position and then our maximum height um, kind of exceeds our L4 position um, which is kind of a good thing because that gives us the wiggle room we desire um, to go ahead and score into the L4 position. Um, and that kind of really finishes up the end effector here. So I'll kind of go into our next uh, assembly, which is kind of tied into the end effector, which is going to be our D uh, algae fire. Um, and it's a little hard to show here how it interacts with the algae because I don't have the algae in here currently. Um, but the way this would work normally is we would, uh, let me go and pan normal again. Go and bring this all the way down. The way this would normally work is we can start by either extending this all the way out um, like this. And I guess in this case, we would be hitting this wall. Um, but I, I guess ultimately the way this would 
uh, work is maybe we'd bring it up just a little bit. Um, and then from there, we would bring this arm out. And this should be, from our testing, um, we noticed that you don't ever have to interact with or be past the plane of the reef spokes to be able to interact with the game piece, uh, the, the algae. Um, so for at this position, what we're going to do is we're going to have these top wheels right here are going to be fixed. Um, so they will not be spinning. And these bottom wheels will be trying to actively pull the algae out. And what that will hopefully do is that um, as we move up, it'll kind of um, pull it into the um, this little area right here. And this area is not as wide as the algae. Um, this is actually, this gap right here, I believe, is right around 13 inches as of right now, maybe 13 and a half. Um, so it's not quite as wide as the algae. Yeah, right around 13 and a half. Um, but that'll allow us to, um, we basically kind of like pinch the algae as we kind of like grab into it. And we found that was really successful for getting a good hold. But with that, also with this mechanism kind of being as relatively as simple as we can kind of get it in terms of motion that we're doing, um, when we grab the algae out and we come to uh, come down, we'll actually have to drive away before bringing the elevator down. Um, so that's just something we'll have to be cautious of as the algae will kind of be outside of our robot while we're scoring. Um, and from there, we can then uh, bring the elevator down and then go and score into the uh, processor from there. And uh, we are biased to the bottom of the um, processor. Um, but for that, we can always just raise the elevator a little bit and get it into there, no problem. Um, so we're not really worried about that. But that about covers it for most of our superstructure. Um, for now, we're, we, it's a little bit more complex than we had kind of hoped for. And we I forgot to mention, we are using the Thrifty Elevator. Um, we use the configurable elevator to go and make this elevator. And we're going to be cascading the second stage, which the entire end effector is on. We do have some worries about kind of the weight of the entire end effector, um, as basically our entire robot is attached to um, the end effector in the, four, the uh, second stage. So we'll, it'll be interesting to see how our weight is when we're all the way up high um, and trying to minimize that as much as possible. Um, so yeah, only things left is to flesh out um, kind of where our motion is going to be for these top rollers here. Um, and then figure out what our superstructure is going to look like for this ramp and we'll should have a pretty competitive robot. Thank you guys for watching and be sure to check out more Cranberry Alarm RI3D on Fun Robotics Network. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu first.